The first snow of the season for some over the next 24 hours, followed up by a continued wintry pattern through the rest of December. Welcome in, folks. Happy Thursday, December 4th. And uh, yeah, you heard it right. The first snow of the season on the way tonight and into tomorrow for some of us. Others uh, still got my eyes on this very active pattern. It looks like multiple storm systems could start to work through uh, parts of the country over the next 10 days. And depending on how things evolve, we could definitely get some big snows out of them. So we'll be breaking it all down for you in today's video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. If you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications. It's uh, free. It doesn't cost you a penny. All it does is help keep you informed and help me run the channel for free uh, like it is right now. So again, doing all that really is appreciated and uh, means the world to me that you're tuning in today to get your forecast from me. All right, let's go ahead and start diving on into it. Next to me is the latest run of our European ensembles. Uh, honestly, one of our most reliable tools that we use, just showing the general places that could see snow over the next 10 days or so and obviously this will change somewhat but you can see we've got that stripe of snow through the mid-atlantic and portions of the southeast today and then a snow train continues down from canada through the midwest through the ohio valley and then even into parts of the northeast uh, here again like i said through the next 10 days or so and i do think it will be relatively active now some of us going to get into lulls at times but i do see continued winter weather chances starting right now and here's kind of one of the components from it. we've got a big shot of arctic air uh, working down out of canada right now into the united states and you can see those pinkish and purplish colors uh, those are very cold temperatures starting to ooze through the midwest fridge day up into minnesota into wisconsin iowa chicago quite cold today as well that cold air gonna follow a little low pressure system right now that is kind of developing along the gulf coast and they're gonna interact and that's gonna mean a swath of snow overnight tonight and into tomorrow uh, through parts of the mid Atlantic and that will be the first snow of the season places like DC Baltimore the Delmarva yeah your name hasn't been called a lot but things trending up for you even down into the triad of North Carolina Danville Boone Blacksburg Roanoke I think a lot of folks going to see measurable snow out of this event and you can already see it getting going. We've had some snow earlier today. Uh, got a good pasting in Oklahoma City. I showed you that yesterday on our high resolution model. Ended up coming to life quite well. Even had a little bit of wintry weather north of Little Rock today, north of Memphis right now uh, at the time I'm recording this. And then later on, that's going to spread north of Nashville towards Clarksville, Boiling Green, Bristol. And then sure enough, all of this going to work into the mid-Atlantic, Virginia, northern North Carolina, north of I-40, the Delmarva. Yeah, a lot of folks going to see some snow out of this. Let's go ahead and time it out for you. Then show you those potential snowfall totals. Well, the high-resolution model doing pretty well with this system so far, so we'll keep using it. Uh, if it's a winning deck, might as well run it back. So here we go. By the time any of you are watching this, this is around 6 or 7 uh, Eastern time this evening, and you can see we've got uh, some snow and ice, kind of uh, sleet snow mix, we'll call it, breaking out in and around Nashville, especially north of the city, getting up towards the Kentucky line uh, during the uh, evening and into the overnight of tonight. You can see that blue breaking out there towards uh, Boiling Green. And then eventually, by the time we get into the overnight, here's 10 p.m., and uh, closer to the midnight hour, I think snow going to start breaking out into the high country of North Carolina, Boone, northbound especially, up towards southwestern Virginia, southern West Virginia. I think a nice, uh, constant, moderate snowfall during the overnight hours. All rain for Charlotte, Greenville, Spartanburg, Atlanta, Columbia. Now, for some of the northern areas here, the Highway 11 corridor of South Carolina, uh, maybe even north of Charlotte a little bit, I wouldn't be shocked if maybe we get a little bit of sleet to mix in at times with this. Would not surprise me at all. However, this is not going to have any sort of travel impacts and probably won't even see much snow in those areas. Going to be a different story, though, along the I-40 corridor. This is around 2 a.m. This is when things get a little bit more interesting and a little bit more hectic in some of the data. Uh, places like Hickory, uh, Statesville, uh, Morganton, going to be on a fine line where potentially the cities themselves and especially south going to be a very cold rain. To the north, though, you start to get into a bit of a mix, some snow, sleet, rain mix. And once you get up to the triad towards uh, Wake Forest University there in Winston-Salem, uh, Greensboro, kind of northbound, that's where we're going to be into the better snow chances. Now, I think it's going to be right into that battleground zone between just a slushy mess and uh, potentially higher snowfall totals right through the triad north of 85 and 40 into that region. Like I said, I think Statesville probably trending more towards rain as of today's data. But you go up north towards Danville, Roanoke, uh, into central Virginia. That's where this is going to be a beautiful all-snow event. And we can definitely see some pretty good accumulation. Even check it out by this time, starting to spread into D.C., Baltimore, the Delmarva. A nice, uh, just uh, quick-hitting little winter weather event. Wouldn't call it a winter storm per se. 
Um, but uh, nonetheless, a nice pace job of snow. And this is going to be that nice, wet, big snowflakes that start falling here into the overnight, waking up tomorrow morning, likely with some travel concerns into Virginia, even uh, north of Greensboro, into the high country of North Carolina, could see some travel concerns. Raleigh, eastern North Carolina, good old fashioned rain. Again, maybe could start as a brief uh, sleet uh, rain mix uh, before changing over to all rain, but you're going to need to go north towards the Virginia line to see that good old fashioned snow. Even gets up uh, into Delaware and even tries to sneak into southern New Jersey here by tomorrow afternoon and then clears out by the time we get into the evening. Some leftover rain showers, I-20 corridor southbound and a cold rain at that. All right, that's the timing of this thing. Let me show you those potential snowfall totals and then we'll break down the next snowfall chances coming up over the next 10 days. I'm going to start by showing you the National Weather Service forecast, and we'll get into some probabilistic uh, modeling here. We'll start uh, down into Tennessee and Kentucky. The NWS, not overly excited here. I'll be honest, though. I could see this overperforming some of these totals uh, just uh, near Boiling Green, Clarksville, and uh, over towards Somerset. That region, I could definitely see uh, getting an inch of snow out of this, but they're not super excited about it. Uh, but most of the accumulation would probably be on the grass anyway, and probably not the roadways. Still, be careful though, this evening if you're traveling through this region. Could definitely see some snow accumulations once you get out towards Pikeville that's when numbers start to climb one to three inches into that area and then numbers really bump up once you get into North Carolina and Virginia and you can see that battleground I mentioned Greensboro to Hickory uh, to just north of Raleigh that's where it's going to be that fine line where to the north of these areas we could get a nice little snow uh, event but right along that I-40 and 85 corridor going to be a bit of a slushy mess I think Greensboro half an inch probably an okay bet uh, but uh, it could be one of those things where you start as rain then you go to snow then you go to kind of a sleet rain mix again kind of messy but you go north towards Danville Roanoke and into Richmond that's where this could be a bit of a home run for at least a small system. That's where I'd expect one to three plus inches. Some folks out here could get more than that, especially the mountains of southwestern Virginia down towards Boone and then out towards Richmond. I see kind of two hot spots there where a couple folks could get into that two to four, maybe even three to five inch range would not shock me, but going to be a nice little storm here. Same thing for the mountains of southern West Virginia. That's not all. Yeah, I know I get comments all the time from D.C., Baltimore saying, where is my snow? This might not be a big storm, but it's trended good for you. Down towards Fredericksburg, one to three inches. Harrisonburg, one to three inches. Uh, Charlottesville, that same general uh, uh, area and total wise. D.C. and Baltimore are going to be on the northern fringe, but this trends north just a little bit more. You could get in that one to three inch range. Right now, though, through here, uh, Germantown uh, towards Laurel and uh, Baltimore, even down into D.C., right through the DMV. Probably more of a dusting up to an inch. Isolated spots could see a little bit more. Could even see some flakes out towards uh, Wilmington, Dover, uh, Bridgeton, or Bridge, I believe, Bridgeton, maybe. Let me know, my friends in New Jersey, how you say that. But anything uh, north of Philadelphia, probably not going to get anything out of this one. I know it's annoying for my New York City fans, my Philly fans. Uh, it just seems like you can't win as of late, right? Well, it could be another one of those scenarios. But south into the DMV, nice little snow event overnight tonight into tomorrow morning before clearing up into the afternoon. Now, I wanted to show you this as well. Let me get my uh, writing utensil out of the way. This is the probabilistic forecast. So this is the chance of seeing more than three inches of snow. Like I said, we could get some of the higher totals in here. This is the blend of models. Yeah, pretty good uh, number showing up for Roanoke uh, towards uh, Pulaski. Uh, Galax in that 80% uh, range of seeing more than three inches of snow. Could even see some of that out towards Richmond. I'd be uh, hard-pressed to find any of those totals in North Carolina outside of the high country. Again, Boone northbound up towards the Virginia line. You bump it up to, let's uh, let's change it to five inches. How about that? What are the odds of getting five inches of snow out of this? Well, it would help if I typed in five. You know, it might just have to move the slider. Let's do it this way. All right. There we go, five inches. What are the odds of seeing five inches? Uh, well, we'll let the map load and uh, not as high, but still you see the chances here. Some of us in that 50% chance range of seeing uh, five inches of snow in and around Roanoke and up towards Lexington. So I think Southwest Virginia could definitely be a hot spot, and we're gonna get a nice band from there all the way over to Richmond that even likely extends into the Delmarva, but the chance for the real boom total is gonna be there uh, towards the Roanoke area uh, where this could be a borderline more of a winter storm than just a quick hitting event. All right, that's tonight's event. We've got more active weather on the way, though. Let me show you why I see it, and then we'll kind of talk about who has the highest chances of seeing more snow over the next 10 days or so. 
Well, the pattern is going to stay pretty favorable. And uh, if any of you watch my buddy Mitch West Weather, uh, you know he loves talking about the MJO and MJO Phase 8. Well, it's here, and it's here to stay through much of December. I've even talked about it back in my November videos. But now that we're here, I'm just going to kind of show you the actual maps. Maybe I'll pull out the MJO chart again sometime. Let me know in the comments if you liked uh, that sort of thing. But uh, basically what that means is we're in a favorable phase that a lot of blue, a lot of troughing, a lot of colder air, and a lot of storminess or energy in the atmosphere is just going to continue rotating through the eastern United States and continue to bring the chance of winter weather for some of us. Um, and you can see it continues. We just get more troughing, more pieces of energy that keep flying through the eastern U.S. Another piece here by Monday morning, it looks like. Another trough dipping down, another shot of cool air, and there is some energy with that one, so we'll need to watch. Can we get some snow? Can we get some phasing of a low pressure off the coast? Could the mid-Atlantic cash in again? Low chances right now, but uh, at the very least, it's something I'm watching. Then after that, if I get us back down to where we were, sorry about that, uh, you keep it going, and uh, it's more troughing, another piece of energy right around uh, a week from now, next Thursday works in, and then you keep it going, and maybe some ridging tries to build in, but I'll be honest, folks, the models, you can see it dies pretty quick here by the middle of the month, and the models have, in the long range, tried to show warmer air coming back, and then it just hasn't materialized, so we'll see how it ends up playing out, but at the very least, I can guarantee you this, more shots of cold air. This is your temperature anomaly, so all those blue and pink colors, that's below average temperatures, and uh, you can see it just keeps on coming down out of Canada. The cold air express continues. It's kind of our version of the Pineapple Express, but uh, with cold air. Here we go, by 7 to 10 days from now, yeah, still below average temperatures east of the Mississippi, especially into the Midwest and the Northeast, but even oozing down into the Southeast. Then we'll see if maybe we get a brief warm-up around the middle of the month, but Again, I'd be uh, kind of skeptical. All right, that's kind of the ensemble view of things. Uh, let's talk about specific chances, though. Let me show you when some of that energy is going to be flying around, when it could try to link up, and then we'll end things out once again with some probabilistic forecasting, and I'll let you have a wonderful rest of your night after that. <laughs> All right, so speaking of those potential winter weather chances after the snow event tonight, let's talk about it. I mentioned Monday, and I'll start here. This is not a slam dunk at all, and I mentioned it in yesterday's video, and I'll, a little tangent I'll go on. If you're new to the channel, I show you model data. I show you possibilities that could occur, but that doesn't always mean it's a slam dunk. So whenever we talk about these potential time frames, I don't want you to take away, oh, we're definitely getting a big snow right then uh, because he showed some colors on a map. No, we're just talking about potential uh, time frames because I'm not going to be the meteorologist that lets a snowstorm sneak up on you 24 hours in advance. I'm going to tell you when there are periods to watch. And then if I think something big's coming, trust me, you'll know it. I'll, uh, I'll tell you. But speaking on next Monday, we do have a piece of energy uh, flying down out of the Rockies. Again, it's one of these uh, vorticity lobes that keep rotating in out of Canada, connected to that 500 millibar height anomaly map I just showed you with all the troughing. And uh, anyway, this piece tries to get amplified. Here we go by Monday morning. It's this one right in here, and it gets stronger. The question is, though, can it slow down and can it mature enough to really get uh, some upper level lift over what would probably be the mid-Atlantic or northeast for maybe a winter weather? event. The models have been kind of back and forth. The GFS was very excited about it. Then the GFS lost it. The other models were not excited. They got a little bit closer to the GFS and everything's kind of met in the middle somewhere uh, where it's not overly high chance, but there's at least enough to talk about maybe some flakes uh, trying to get going. That's the setup on the model. And then after that, another piece of energy, this one more of a clipper dives down into the Midwest in the Northeast by, this would be Tuesday. And then you get another piece by next Thursday. Check out that one. That one diving quite far South again. What we need, though, is we need the energy to slow down a bit. See how it's flying around? We need it to kind of slow a bit once it hits the Ohio Valley, gets down here, and then kind of slowly starts to tilt more. That's what we want if we want a big snowstorm. Right now, everything's just very progressive, meaning it's in and it's out of here. Partially because, or the reason for that is we don't have a lot of blocking up into Greenland, uh, which is kind of uh, not helping us out a lot. We've got the cold air, we've got the energy, it's just moving a little too quick to really charge up and uh, really fuel a storm at the surface for something big. You can kind of see that on the European model as well. This is the event tonight, like we just talked about, that one kind of works on through. And then uh, we got some lake effect up into Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, into the Northeast. And then here comes a little clipper by Monday, Tuesday, and uh, oh, it gets close. See what happens. We've got some northern stream energy. It tries to connect with this southern stream energy. They just don't quite fully do it on the European model. Uh, I'll tell you, though, 
it's something to watch. And if I take a sounding, and I know we're going to get a little meteorological here on you, if I take a sounding over the heart of North Carolina, uh, what's happening here is we're just lacking a little bit of upper level lift. We've got some moisture. Uh, we've got uh, cold enough air. We just need that upper level piece of energy to help us out here. And we could definitely see maybe a quick little mesoscale event. Uh, again, wouldn't be a big deal, but something nonetheless to think about on Monday. Uh, not Again, not forecasting any snow, but just a time frame to watch. Then after that, I think the train will really get going from kind of uh, Alberta into the Northeast. These Alberta Clippers are going to keep on coming. The question then continues, can they connect with Southern Stream Energy? That's what we're waiting on really to get a big storm. And you can see there's a nice clipper. There's another nice clipper. Here's another nice clipper. It just keeps coming through the next 10 days. Just never quite fully digs far south enough to get something uh, really blockbuster going. All right, that's what that looks like. Let me just show you one more thing. That's the uh, ensemble chance of getting some snow uh, here into the longer range. We'll break that down a little bit and then I'll let you go. All right, so the European Ensembles, like I said, one of our better tools to use. And what do they show in terms of the longer range? Well, remember, this is tonight's event. A really good chance of snow up into central Virginia, even uh, the northern section North Carolina there near the Virginia line. Here comes that next little system, a stripe of snow potentially into Iowa, the Midwest, and uh, up into the Northeast. And then notice how it gets a little blip here of some chances once again into Virginia, North Carolina, kind of the same areas that are getting it now. That's something to watch. Not a huge signal, but enough that we'll keep an eye on it for sure. And then after that, check out the Alberta Clipper train. It just keeps coming. Places like Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, the interior northeast, uh, portions of the Ohio Valley looking quite good. Here's the thing, though, if it can connect with something at the coast, if it can dig down far enough and uh, turn negative and tilt, then we could definitely get a bit of a Millaray system. Not a forecast right now, but something to keep an eye on if the cards can align here. And you can even see right here, this is around uh, 7 to 10 days from now, this is around the uh, 12th to 14th of December, you can kind of see that where chances are higher into the Midwest, but you start to get some noise down here into the Mid-Atlantic and towards the I-95 Something that we'll absolutely keep watching. But either way, I think uh, in terms of the next 10 days, we've got tonight first snow for some of us into Virginia and the Delmarva and even North Carolina, that is. And uh, then after that, the Alberta Clipper train keeps a roll in the Midwest, going to keep winning. And again, that's a good thing. It's going to lay snowpack for folks uh, further south. It'll keep a uh, cold air locked in longer. And then we also have to watch, can that connect with something at the coast to get something big going? Uh, it's a distinct possibility, not the highest one right now, but something I'll definitely keep uh, an eye on and keep you updated on. All right, folks, well, that's all I've got for you on this Thursday. Appreciate you tuning in there uh, with me. Again, just a quick thanks to everyone. The channel's had just insane growth over the past year. Uh, I know the winter time is a big time on the channel. A lot of you folks like when I break down uh, the winter weather, and I uh, just want you to know how much you mean to me. So I appreciate all of you. All right, y'all have a great one. Stay safe. Enjoy the snow if you're getting some of it. And I'll see you all next time.